Hi, this is Kara Newman. This is the Saturday Human Colony, Human Colony, Human Colony Hukalo webinar. It is the 14th of July, 2018. And today in our room, just to introduce, and I'll introduce our special guest in a moment, we have Amanda, Dawn, we have Lana, Matthew, Micheline, uh, Reinhard, Star, Stephanie, Steve, Tom Tomas. And then we also have our very special guest, uh, and a motorcycle going through my house. <laughs> Yalika Odom, if I, I don't say it right. Yalika, say, say it Yael, Yael Oded. Yael Oded. We have Yael Oded. And she is a channel. She lives in Tel Aviv, Israel. She has a very vast spiritual background. She's also uh, lived on light and prana for a period of time. And we'll talk to her about that. But Welcome to Human Colony, and thank you for being here today from your home there in Israel. Hi, thank you Hi. for inviting me. Yeah. So can you, for the because this is your first time here on Human Colony, so if you can, just introduce yourself and really give a little bit of your background, you know, how you started channeling, what is your spiritual background, you know, a, a short one, but how you got to where you are now, and, and then maybe a little bit about the work that you do. Uh, okay. Um, I was a very rational person. I studied biology, and when I was young, I was certain that everything has uh, an explanation in physics, in chemistry, and um, and I, I didn't really think there is such a thing as even a soul, and that everything is only what you see. And uh, I did a very long process of opening my eyes, very long. Um, and then I started to have, to, uh, to get things in dreams. I got um, uh, things that were happening, people were, um, like for example, someone was uh, gone missing and people were looking for her. And I saw in a dream where she was. Or, so I got these things. And then uh, nine years ago, I said to myself, I want to be able to receive answers when I choose and not just to wait for a random dream. So I went to this course. Uh, and in the second lesson, during the meditation, it just opened up for me. It was like uh, opening the, finding the the right station on the radio. And in, in this meditation, I met my guides. It was one of the most um, emotional and exciting um, and touching moments of my life. It was like meeting a relative that you really love and you didn't see him for 20 years or so. Um, and since then, um, I started to channel. Uh, well, I can talk for a long time. I don't know, you know, um, if you wanted. To so the class you went to, is, was it specifically for channeling or was it just yeah. to open you up? Was specifically for channeling. It was a course that I studied there for a year because it was very interesting, but actually in the second lesson was already open because I was really ready. And, and also what the guides explained to me that, uh, you know, for everyone it's different, but for me I needed to get uh, to the stage in my life where I was stable enough right. and grounded enough. Right. So I could deal with it. So I could um, accept, you know, the, the the energy and to really be able to uh, help people and and be able to be a channel to the right. energy and the. So right. I couldn't do it before. I was uh, forty-four 
or 45 when I started. Right. So you, you're talking about being prepared and being ready to do it. Did What was your preparation? Was it just life or was it classes? Was there changes you made that made it? Because I, The reason I ask that is because I've been teaching a channeling class uh, for a human colony just for a few times for people. And that's one of the things we talk to is preparing your your vessel to be yeah. a good channel. So what did that what did that mean for you? And and the fact that you were, you know, 44, as you said, maybe you reached a sort of point where you were just ready in that moment. But up until that time, I mean, because I can imagine you probably didn't say 30 years ago, oh, I want to be a channel. It probably kind of mm -hmm. I mean, how did that work for you? Uh, well, as I said, it was a very long process. Like, I, I think maybe the first moment of the process was when I was 27 and I had a horrible migraine and my brother-in-law said to me, why don't I give you healing? And I was like, healing, there is no such thing. It's energy and, uh, you know, but whatever you want to try, go ahead. <clears throat> and this was just like a small moment where things started to shift for me. And I, I, I think I started to, um, it's not knowing, it's feeling that there is something beyond, something that I can't see, that I can't explain, you know? And it was really a very long process. I, for years, I was working uh, on myself. I went to many workshops and I studied many things like Feng Shui and many, many things. Uh, and also I had um, an interaction with, with aliens. Uh, this was, um, I think it was 15 years ago. And, and this happened also, um, it was like, almost like a trauma uh, that really shook me up, you know? It was horrifying for me, but I needed, now I understand that I needed all kinds of experiences in order to get to, to this place, that I'm, that I'm stable and that, I, that I'm, and it's interesting that only it's a process that doesn't stop. I mean, I, all the time I keep learning and understanding things and the guides are teaching me all the time. Mm. So every few months, suddenly I receive information that I, I didn't have before. So just, I think, uh, maybe two weeks ago, I realized that the aliens I saw back then and this was a horrifying experience for me. Yeah. Uh, I realized that they are working with me now when I do healing. Mm. Do you, can you share your experience with that? Because there's a lot of people here that have either had experiences or very, very interested in our ET uh, or yeah. ED dimensional friends. Is it? Is it too? No, it's to hear? no, no. I I oh, was. Think. It yeah. was, uh, we were in a trip with my sons, my, my younger was four, so it was even 18 years ago, yeah, and we were in the, in the desert, <coughs> and it was like, um, we were in a trip, you know, walking all day with friends in the desert and climbing mountains and everything, and then we, we got to, like, kind of a lodging and we got there really late at night. Uh, and uh, the kids were already asleep. <clears throat> we put them in the beds. My husband went to the bathroom. I was so tired. I just closed the light. I went into bed, closed my eyes. Oh, yeah. And I saw, I, I can't even explain. It was so horrifying. What I felt was that I see the essence of evil. That was what I thought then. Now I know it's not true. But this is what I felt. Like out of nowhere, it was like a man and a woman, <clears throat> or a male and a female, and they were gray, 
And I, back then, I didn't know anything about aliens, really, nada, okay? Apart from the movie E.T., I knew nothing. And I didn't know what it was. And they had very, she had very long hair. Hmm. And But she, her skin was gray or her, her, her she was gray? Skin. Yeah, it was like, what I saw was like a gray entity. Okay. And I know now that it was um, uh, like a projection because I saw okay. it only when my eyes were closed. But when I opened my eyes, I could sense they're still there. Okay. Uh, and every time I closed my eyes, I saw them. Now, and they had, their eyes were uh, like, um, like flashlights, uh, oh. like, you know, coming and and they were like running towards me. So I just, I immediately opened my eyes and I spread, I had, I gave this scream that I didn't know where it was coming. It's not like it, just a scream. It was coming like from my stomach, not from I my throat. I before. <laughs> I had a scream. <laughs> like a yeah. cockroach? No, it's like, and every, and the day after everyone or all, all our friends were in other rooms they all heard the scream of course they thought someone was getting murdered or something wow so and then the whole night i couldn't sleep right. they wouldn't leave uh my husband came running but he didn't see anything uh, my kids woke up from the scream so they w came to our bed and all the night they were sleeping and i was shaking in bed and begging these creatures to leave me alone. I said, I'm so tired, please, I want just to sleep. Please leave me alone. I was crying and begging and they wouldn't leave. Wow. And when the sun came up, then they were gone and I fell asleep at five in the morning. Hmm. So, and the, the interesting thing is that the next day, we, we were all the day on, on a trip again. This and is we in were Israel supposed, this happened? Or? Yeah, yeah, in the Israel desert. Okay. And, and we, were, uh, we were supposed to come back to sleep in the same place. And I was terrified. Right. So, so I called my, my brother-in-law that I talked about before. His mother is a channeler for 30 years now. Okay. And, well, that's right. and I okay. asked him, huh? You had mentioned her, yeah. Yeah, and I asked him, please, uh, and I couldn't, we didn't have connections, so I left him a message, please ask your mother, what's that? I mean, maybe it's, I thought maybe it was ghosts, you know, or people that yeah. were murdered there or something. Right. And all day, I couldn't get, uh, you know, anything on my phone, and then when we were already coming back to the place, and it was already night, I saw he left me a message, and the message was, my mother says it's aliens, but you need, and what you need to do is light a candle. And I said, where am I going to get a candle in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the night? <laughs> yeah. And I was terrified, so we went to the room. The kids were already asleep, of course. I opened the room. I see on the table in the middle of the room a candle and matches and a note from the landlady she says listen i'm so, so sorry we have a problem with the electricity so i left you a candle oh wow so so we lit the candle and we could sleep all night <laughs> <laughs> so this was and now i know only it's interesting two weeks ago i had some kind of a procedure with, with a, a really little anesthesia you know, just uh, mild. And when I woke up and I was still a little bit, uh, you know, fuzzy, yeah. I saw those two aliens sitting in front of me, next to me in the room, in the hospital, watching over me. Oh. And, I, so, and this is the first time that I realized that they were helping. They actually have, yeah, they have a connection to me. They're working with me. When I, when I have you been able to 
have you been able to now to sort of make a conscious connection with them or is it more still that they're in your yeah. periphery? Yeah, so a few years ago, when I did healing on myself, I asked the guides to do healing for me and I felt it very strong. And suddenly I felt, I realized it's not my guides doing it. Mm. So I asked them, who is it? There is someone else here with us. So they said, they gave me a name, Navajo. And they said, uh, he's a gray alien. Mm. And I asked to see him. I said, why can you, you can, you know, show me your image. They're Pleiadians. They're really like light. I want to see him. And they were laughing. They said, no way. If we show him to you, you will panic and the whole thing will be over. Hmm. And I begged like a child, you know, I said, no, I, I promise you, I won't scream. I won't <laughs> panic. Yeah. Really, I'm, I'm, I'm a good girl. And they wouldn't. Yeah. But since that day, I was able to talk to him and communicate some of the times, communicate to him directly. Okay. When it was like, he's like, uh, they're using him like a technician. Hmm. Uh, but only two weeks ago, I made the connection that he's the one that was there, that right. I saw then, and th this is the first time I saw, he also has this woman with him, female, and she's like, she's helping him. Right. She, it's, she's not his uh, wife or something. No, so. she's like a... <laughs> yeah. So... Well, that's really interesting. And, and have you had any other, so that sort of led you to really, that sort of really opened you up, basically. Yeah. yeah. Of course, I didn't know it back then. Very, you know, it took years. But when I look at it, when I look back, I understand that it was part of, of the process I needed to go through. Right. Because today, I can see them and I can work with them. And I'm not afraid. Right, right. Well, that's a bit, fear is a is a big problem if you're trying to uh, do stuff, and it's really good when you, you know, are able to get over that fear, and then then you then you can actually enjoy what you're doing. But it, you know, we we always think that we want to have these, you know, face to face with different beings, but for a lot of for a lot of us, it would probably be quite scary just because it's just so different from what we know. And, yeah. you know, like you said, you thought it was evil. Yeah. So what the guides explained to me that um, I thought it was evil because they're different from us. Yeah. They don't have the same kind of feelings. Right. So for me to, to look at them, it was like it was in in a way it was like looking at a void mm. you know yeah. it's like something cold or empty mm. and, and this is also why when i when i realized that navajo was there with us i asked them uh is he is there any chance he will harm me so mm. they said he will never do it on purpose. Oh. But if we don't watch over him, he may make a mistake. Oh. But his intention is, is good. He wants to help, and he also gets things from that. It's not like, you know, I mean, he's also learning from, from doing this work, and he, he gets something from it. Okay, so you, you, he's, he's sort of learning for his own culture and his own knowledge. Yeah. As he assists you. Yeah. I wonder how common that is. That's quite interesting that you were sort of maybe assigned a, someone who will help you in, in that on the astral and and uh, or on another dimension. And and they're also sort of an intern, you know, taking back their information that they're learning. That's quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to move forward a little bit because there's a subject I'd like to get to before we go to you channeling. But um, you, you, because we don't have a lot of people from Israel, we have uh, um, the uh, a couple people we do know, and and not a lot from the Middle East. Um, but we we are familiar 
most of us with Ray Mayor, uh, who is a pranic living teacher. He was probably one of the, I guess he's become one of the most uh, famous about it. Um, and he's based in Israel and, and a lot of people have done his workshops where you basically learn to live off of light and you're not consuming food. And he's done workshops here in the Netherlands. He's done them all over the world. Um, but you actually did that. And you you did, for a period of time, eat nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So can you maybe just, what, what made you, first of all, want to do it? I've never wanted to do that. <laughs> I think it's a calling well, for people. And I yeah. think it's interesting. But it's not something I can be very honest I've ever been called to do. And there's a woman that's... Uh, is in human colony. She's uh, her name's Ava, and she she actually did the workshop as well, and she loved it. But she said it was it was very much of a stretch for her. But she also would like at one moment to do that, and also Sheer, who's not here today, but he's also been quite interested in that. So maybe you can talk about why you did it, what happened when you did it, and and then how you maybe stopped or or if you've stopped. I think you have, but. Yeah. Well, um, I think, as you said, it's a calling. Yeah. I think the only reason to do it, you feel it's calling you, mm. uh, and it's uh, it's not like it's. I don't. I never recommend it to anyone. Okay. Um, for me, I heard about it a few years ago. And the minute I, I read about it, I, I someone sent to me the blog that Ray posted when just when he started being a pranic. So I got I just read his first uh, you know posts, and immediately I knew it's something I have to try. Um, I think one of the I mean, it has a lot of layers, but I think one of the things were, I said to myself, as a person that comes from uh, biology, from everything is so rational, if this is true, it just shakes the earth underneath science, medicine, everything. Like, I was like, if it's true, I need to find out. Uh, I need to check it. Yeah, I uh, watched the video. There's a very nice film with the different people all over the world that are doing it. And I, I had the, yeah, I can imagine that, because afterwards you think, wow, is this really something that I can really, really do, you know? Yeah. Well, I now I think it's, it's something you can do, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it. Uh, for me, right. the, the, the seminar, like the workshop, the pranic workshop, uh, it was the most difficult thing I ever did in my life. It was 11 days. That, uh, I was like, um, I thought I was going to die at one point. Yeah. Uh, but somehow, I didn't really care about it. I mean, I said, okay, if this is what's supposed to happen, <laughs> then let it be. Really, and were you willing to? You, you were willing to die. Yeah, I, I, and I really can't understand it. I mean, logically, because I am. Because you I love so to weak. live. Well, do mm -hmm. you think because you were so weak that you had reached a point where you were like, okay, it's almost over, or no? You no, know what no. I mean? Like they say that there's the 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 fear of people, and then they. You know, and then when you're uh, close to dying, people kind of let go. But do you feel like you were no. close to dying, or no? I or think ever since I started, game? everything I started to channel, I don't have a fear of death. Right, right. Yeah, because but fear of death has nothing to do with wanting to die or being like saying, "Okay, take me now." <laughs> you know what I mean? No, no. It wasn't fear either. at all. It wasn't fear at all. It yeah. was. Uh, I was I was going through a spiritual process. Yeah. And I wasn't sure what's going to be the outcome. Right. I had it was one night like in the middle of the process we were doing four days it was uh, 
uh, dry fasting without water. Right. And in the, in the second night, I was alone in the room and I was uh, fainting. I fainted so I, and I just uh, let myself lie on the floor because I didn't want to fall. And this happened to me five times. I would faint, then wake up, faint, wake up. Wow. And I said to myself, well, maybe it's the end. Somehow I need it because, you know, I could go and take a glass of water, but I sure. wouldn't. Right. I need it. It's dry to fast just to tell people the process. We have somebody. somebody needs to mute. I don't know who came in. Wow. Okay. The, the, ooh, who is that? The dry fast is that you, um, you, 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 you drank slowly and slowly, like you started with the juices and then you got less and less. Is that right? And then you went completely. No, juice was only the first few hours. Then you go only to water. Okay. And in, and in the, mid, the middle of the seminar, it's four days without even water. Right. And this is like the, um, it's like, all your cells are dying and be and reborn, something like that. Yeah. Like the, the body is reorganizing itself. And and but I believe that all this process is uh, is not really us doing it. I, I think there are entities that this is their job. When someone wants to become pranic, they it's their job to open. Like what they do is actually, you have the, um, um, how do you call this? Um, Crown chakra. No, the gland. Oh, the inside pineal. The brain. Yeah, the pineal gland. Yeah. And uh, they, it's like they open. It's like it has an ability to take all the energy in the universe and transfer it to whatever you need mm -hmm. uh, iron um, energy you know minerals everything and so what they do is like they open up again this gland mm -hmm. like you, you need to uh, uh, you have the the ability but it was closed in all the history of human, you know, so it needs to open back again. Right. I, I know that, I know that uh, when, when uh, I was reading about, because I studied her when I was smaller, uh, Therese Newman, who was, because she has the same last name, the same spelling as me, but she was a mm -hmm. Roman Catholic uh, nun, and she had an experience when she was young, and she promised God that if, you know, she would never eat again, if possible. And she had three angels come to her and do something. And then from then on, she no longer ate. And I think it was Francis Assisi. And he also says he had beings come to him. He said angelic or heavenly beings came to him and did something. And then he no longer uh, yeah. ate. So that would be interesting to say if it was the sort of aliens or energies or angelic I, I saw them in one of our meditations mm -hmm. we were lying on the floor in this uh, seminar and uh, I just in the meditation I saw that it's like above each one of us there was this very very tall it's like an entity that part of it was here but it went through i don't know to the center of the universe or something wow. something huge yeah yeah wow so you but the so thing is that you know I, I i i learned and i understood a lot of thing in the in the process afterwards mm. uh, and i understood that food is um, first of all it's interesting like the in the period of the months where I didn't eat anything, it was so boring, you know. <laughs> yeah. You get up in the morning, and the whole mo day and the whole night, it's like one big mess. And also, when you're pranic, you don't sleep. I, I maybe I slept three hours a night, so you have a lot of time. 
Mm. You don't need to prepare food. You don't need to go shopping. You don't wash the dishes. You don't sleep. So and what do you do? So I started knitting and I started doing a lot of things. But, yeah. you know, and then you, you get, I mean, I got to a point where I said to myself, I want, you know, I want to, to have coffee. And, and the food is like it breaks and something that you wait for. And also it's something, is, um, you know, social. Yeah, you know, you yeah, I, I know a that he chewed gum just to have a taste in his mouth, just to have to use his teeth because he noticed his teeth were feeling weak. Yeah, but yeah. this is for me. It was the opposite because all my life I used to chew gum mm. like crazy, and mm. since I did this process for three years, I didn't put a gum to my mouth. Like I can't just chew, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And also I cannot today, I can't eat like a normal person. If mm -hmm. I eat so, a whole meal, yeah. my body won't accept it. So, 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 you, so how, for how long did you, did you not eat? So uh, after these months, I started just to drink a glass of two or two of juice. And, uh, you know, just a soup, one cup of a soup. So, and it was really nothing, you know, caloric wise, but I wanted to taste and to, to when I'm with friends, I wanted to take at least a cup of uh, uh, orange juice, you know. Yeah. But so I mean, this but was a the, process. Yeah. So after you finished, you, so I, I can imagine when you're done, you would be like, wow, I don't have to eat anymore. So for yeah. that period of time, you went, what, about four months, you said, that you didn't yeah. eat any food and just walked And after that also for, even today, I don't need to eat. I don't need it, you know? Mm. But I eat because yeah. it's fun. And, but the thing is, I don't, uh, I mean, I don't even, I'm a vegetarian, almost a vegan. Mm -hmm. And I don't think for a moment today about if I have enough, uh, you know, um, enough of all the, the materials. I don't care about it at all. Mm. If I eat, it's just for the fun of it, you know. Right. right. So it's like you it is, you're free of, of it. You're free of this uh, burden or, you know. So it's, it's freedom. Like if I go out on a trip. I don't need to take care of it. You know? I don't have to care. Well, but what am I going to eat for lunch? What am I going to? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. So it's nice. I think it's a very interesting subject, and I know a lot of people have interests in it and the experience of it. So I just wanted you to share your your experience with it. Do you ever see yourself yeah. stopping eating again, or? Um, yeah, I, I think I will have periods of, of time where. But I, you know, I, I'm not looking for it. Yeah. But I guess, I guess, and I think I'm, I'm in a, in a spiritual process. You know, it's changing, right. and I'm learning, and I don't pretend, or uh, you know, that I'm in the end of it. No. No, no, of course not. Yeah, we always have more and more and more and more to yeah. learn and unpack. So, okay, well. So you channel Pleiadians, is that correct? Yeah. Can you tell us about the beings you channel? Um, they are so smart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like because many times people come to me with problems. And me, as Yael, I say to myself before we start, I say, how am I going to help him? I mean, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. what he needs to hear, what can help him, you know, and uh, and the guides just never cease to amaze me yeah. with their fresh point of view, with their, you know, deep uh, ideas, and they are so inventive, and they always, also, they are very exact, mm. you know, like, their use of words. Sometimes they give a word and they want to give two more words that are 
similar but a little different because I know, you know, they, they want it to be so uh, specific and, and accurate. Yeah. 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 So you you have four beings that you're channeling. Are they a collective, or do you speak when you channel? Do you channel one, or do you channel all of them at once? How does that work? Well, most of the time they give me. I, I receive one. You know. Um, uh, message or uh, and I know that uh, most of the time there it's it's um, a combination of each one of them has his own you know something to give input right but but usually I don't know exactly where it's coming from right but sometimes I mean one of them is like a female. And some of the time, I know it's her. Right. You know? Yeah. So, what are their names, just for our own? Uh, and, and how does how should we address them? Should we? Uh, when you you can say just uh, your else guide. Okay. Uh, there, uh, the woman is Timoa. Okay. And the 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 males are Asael. Niel and Zavdiel. And okay. when I got there and received their names, I didn't know what it means. And then I went to check, and it's all names of angels. That's what I was going to say. They sound very angelic, the names. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't know they these names existed. Okay. So they did. The names, they, the names do exist of the beings that you... That you're speaking with well that's wonderful so they're angelic but in the same stream of the pleiadians is that correct or um i don't think they're angelic mm. i think they're souls like us okay um but they have a role right you know like part of their being is maybe angelic yeah. Right. That's what I mean. Right. Okay. Perfect. So, are you are you ready to channel? Would you would can we ask you to to channel and maybe you can tell us how your process works? What what happens when you channel? What should we? Uh, yeah. This is also funny because in the beginning I thought it's something I need to do. You know, mm -hmm. like I used to summon them and I thought I need to, uh, you know, adjust myself mm -hmm. and, and it was, and then not long ago, I understood that with all due respect to me, yeah. it's not, yeah. it's not anything that I do because I don't really know how to do it. They are okay. doing it. You know? Okay. So I just need to um, trust them and like give myself right. to it. Right. That's right. all I need to do. Okay, so that process of giving yourself takes a second or a minute? Um, it depends. It can really be very quick. Uh, usually it's very okay. quick. Yeah. Well, we will, do they Do they normally say anything like hello or uh, any kind of greeting? Or And do you need to be reminded to drink water or anything like that? Some, no. some channels do. I Sometimes, you know, they, they don't. Uh, like uh, part, part of me is awake okay. all the time okay yeah. perfect because uh, sometimes right. i even um sometimes i even can uh, explain something as me right but it's very rare i do that too <laughs> sometimes they I break explain break. everything better yeah i understand i understand okay well we are going to uh allow you to um bring them in and then we will um hear what they have to say, and then hopefully we will have also some questions. Okay. Hello, dear ones. Hello, thank you for coming and thank you for being here with us. We are very excited and thankful for this 
um, opportunity to touch people from all over the world. It's a very unique opportunity for us. And we really, really thank you for it. We are very, as well, we are very appreciative for you to to share in this way and to bring your energy through, Yalika. Is there anything that you would like to share with us initially about who you are or what you're here to share? Well, first of all, we would like to suggest uh, that each one that is with us today try to uh, keep your uh, heart chakra as open as you can. And we don't mean uh, that you need to do something with an effort. We just mean um, uh, just to remember when you can to breathe to your heart and to say to yourself, I allow my heart to be open because this is where today we want to, uh, to work and to transmit um, energy to you. Is, um, is there like a meditation or anything that we could maybe you could lead us with where everyone can maybe move into that heart space so that as we go forward, we're, we're all on the same frequency? Um, we can do a very short meditation unless someone wants to ask something before. At the moment, no. There aren't any questions. Okay. Yeah. So each one of you, we invite you to just allow your eyelids to drop very lightly. Take a few deep breaths and just concentrate on your breath. And remember that for the, for the following moments, your only job is just to breathe and see to it that with every breath that you take, you fully take the air to completely fill the lungs. And when you exhale, you completely empty the lungs. And see how with every breath, your body is more relaxed. And imagine that you are breathing straight to your heart. And with every breath you take, the heart is filled with warm and bright light. Until you can feel your heart like a small planet inside your body, like a small sun inside your chest. And you feed the sun with your breathing. With every breath, it's going stronger and more illuminated. And 
And now you can try to imagine that you take this warm and sparkling light and very slowly you let it spread to all your body. Take a breath and like the blood that is pumping from your heart to all your body, you see to it that along with the blood, this very bright and shining light is being spread to all your organs, to all your cells. With every breath, until you are like this illuminated beam of light. And dear ones, this is truly what you are and who you are. All you need to do is remember it as many times as you can during the day. Just go back to this feeling that you are a beam of light. And you can use it as a tool whenever you are in a difficult situation or confronted with people in your life that you have difficulties with. Whenever you feel low, you can just snap your fingers and immediately go back to this feeling. And the reason it's easier to live your life like this is because this helps you to connect to who you really are and what you really want to experience, where you really want to be. So just do a short exercise. Try and think of one person in your life that you're finding it difficult with him. Or you can think of a situation in your life that is hard for you, that you're struggling in. Just think of this person or this situation. facing this person or this problem or situation when you are this beam of light. Just breathing, completely filling the lungs and feeling you are a beam of white light and see how much easier it is to just imagine yourself facing this person when you are in this way of being. And very slowly you can 
go back to this time in this place. And if anyone has any questions, uh, we also invite you to to listen to each other uh, when someone else is receiving an answer. Try to listen, not as a guest or a bystander, but try to listen from your own life, from your own perspective, so that you can receive something from yourself also. Thank you for that. That was beautiful advice. Um, we do have a question uh, from the YouTube chat, if you can. And uh, once again, thank you for your sharing and reminding us to put our sense in our heart and to keep our heart open. Um, the question is from Udiyaman Shukla in the chat. Uh, the question is, what's the current status of physical upgrades for people on the planet with strong Pleiadian origin? I've been getting downloads suggesting that people will undergo positive physical changes. Okay, you need to understand that I'm, I'm hearing myself. Yeah. You need to understand that the changes are very gradual and the stages are uh, it's not like when you go from the first grade to the second grade, okay? So you get a certificate and, uh, and you have, uh, you know, the summer vacation and you start a new class. It's all about gradually, um, like, building yourself, building your... Um, your cells, your genetics, your auras, your abilities, okay? Um, it's like something very soft and trying to define and call it and give it names and also trying to grade it like uh, like it's like what was before is less or worse than what is ahead of you we don't view this in the same way okay we we view it um like a very soft and gradual uh, thing and, and the only thing you really want to uh, to focus on and this is exactly what we were talking about the heart chakra um, is just focusing on how can i be more open um, and not in a way of even improving myself it's not about that. It's about opening, opening my eyes, my, my third eye or my um, spiritual eyes, and opening my heart. We really um, urge you to focus on that. Is, is that, uh, does that make sense to you? I think it makes sense. The person's in the chat, so I'll just let them respond uh, in a moment, but, but I think that that made perfect sense. <clears throat> if we can, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, Matthew has a question. Go ahead, Matthew. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, my question is, since I was very little, I've always been able to look inside myself. And when I do, I see this 
very dark place and at the center is this giant glowing crystal and there looks like somebody is in the crystal and is sleeping and i just wanted to know what it is i'm seeing and this was since you were little uh yes uh, as long as i can remember i've been able to do that well what you see is actually a different it's like a part of you that is in a different dimension or maybe you could call it a parallel life or a parallel universe but again it's not really important um, to find the exact um, you know uh, definition what's important for you is to understand that in no way is it an evil being or something that is trying to harm you okay uh, this is like and the fact that you're seeing it in a crystal it's like the crystal is your um, um, uh, like transmitting uh, between parallel uh, lives okay uh, so that the crystal is what you could uh, see as um, you could see as a time machine or a, or a spacecraft it's like a, a tool a machine and what's inside there and looking at you is actually you and what uh, what you want to do is try to make friends with it uh, and just send there the energy of, of love and accepting so you will try to um, really do exercises meditate and go to a place that uh, you can imagine yourself when you are really um, uh, you know relaxed uh, go to a place where the Matthew that you are today and at this uh, place, I can meet this Matthew inside. And you need to do a process. It's not something that you can uh, work with. The, you know, it's not going to change in a minute. But it's calling you to, to work on it. And the work is to meet him, to meet him, to look at him. Within, without fear and gradually um, send love to him and gradually you can uh, blend you know these two um, two parts of you and really become a whole and and get to a peaceful place and it's a work that you can do and you want to do and something we want to say to to everyone that is here with us today and many of these things we talk about are actually related and it's not a coincidence and many of the things relate to, to the heart chakra. Um, and it's a, what we want to, to suggest to all of you is that in your heart, every one of you, there is fear. And for Matthew, he needs to be thankful that he can be so aware of it 
that it's so um, tangible for him, so it's going to be easier for him to work with it. Okay? The work of, first of all, acknowledging, then accepting, uh, and melting it with love. Uh, so what you want to do is try to find this fear and really find the courage to face it. This is a very um, helpful process to do. Thank you very much for that. That's, I think a lot of people, um, we all have something within ourselves that comes up maybe repeatedly, maybe not in the same way as Matthew, but we all have images or conceptions of something going on within us that is really, as you're saying, the opportunity for integration and facing something in order to expand really, to clear yeah. our to clear ourselves and, and so that we can not only have uh, the expansion of it, but also to, to release things. And they wouldn't come unless it was time for that. Is that, is that what you, do you agree yeah. with that? First of all, it's only coming to someone that is willing and able to do the work in this life and in this moment of time. Um, and also, of course, the fear is blocking you in many uh, areas of your life. So if you start to dissolve it, then gradually, you know, it's like a, a, like a house of cards. Maybe even if you will touch only one fear, but it's a very deep fear, then the cards will start, you know, falling and you will see fruits in many areas, in many um, realms of your life. So the fear, we see it as um, an opportunity. And we see it of a, a tool that the soul uses and your higher self uses the fear as a tool to push you to open your eyes, to push you to do the work. Because we are, as human beings, uh, tend to be lazy and we tend to uh, get used, you know, to the normal thing and to our um, comfort zone. So we need the fear to drive us to do the work. And maybe another thing we can say about it is uh, that each one of you came to this life in order to, to work, in order to develop to expand. So you made a plan in advance and you chose this fear for yourself. It's not something that just, uh, you know, falls on you like a punishment or like a karma that you have no um, saying about it. It's your plan. Thank you for that. Um, if we can move on, Michelle has a question. Go ahead, Michelle. It's, hi, how are you? Thank you for being here. Um, it's funny that you just said what you did because I felt very pushed down, like um, in disagreement with maybe what my higher self was having play out for me. So I've been working with my daughter a, a lot and um, she's a lot more sparkly and can 
I don't know. I mean, she can channel my higher self and things of that nature. And I was probing the idea of like, I feel like my higher self is very punitive. <laughs> and do I have to actually have this higher self or could I choose a different one? And in really short order, my higher self was like, you know, I'm only doing this under contract anyway, so peace out. And somebody else, a Pleiadian, um, who would like to be identified as Jack, swooped in and said, hey, I, I will give you more positive reinforcement instead of negative consequences. <laughs> well, first of all, I mean, since I'm not, I don't see like um, how maybe our guest sees or maybe how um, even Matthew sees. Um, I don't know that that's accurate, although I could feel a shift of energy, but I'm not specifically tuned into that energy. So number one, I wanted to know, well, I always had this feeling like you could like that I'm a puppet and I have a bunch of people pulling my strings a lot of times. And maybe I agreed to all of this beforehand, but I also have this idea that I'm a sovereign being and that maybe I can change that if I want to. And so anyway, all of that just kind of happened really quickly. It's not like I vetted the person coming in or anything. So I have a little fear about that switch. Plus, what? I don't even know if that's accurate. Why do I have the fear? Oh. I have fear, yes. Well, because all of it happened very quickly, and it's not like I gave it a lot of thought and time and energy. It just kind of went down. Or at least that's what I was told happened, which means I don't actually know if it's accurate. So I kind of want to check in. So according to my daughter, Jack is a tall white Pleiadian. And he would like to work with me. So it's kind of a broader question. I mean, it's very specific to me, but also the idea of like arguing, I guess, one not being in congruence with one's higher self that we as a soul, as a sovereign being can change that if we choose, or is a question. Can change what, I'm sorry? The higher self, who you work you with. You want to change your higher self? I think I did change my higher self. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, you come to this life uh, with a plan, and you have uh, stages. Um, and what you change, and of course you change and you work and you develop, what you change is your perception as a human being in the body. Okay? You can, first of all, change the way you perceive yourself and the way you perceive a, everyone around you and the way you perceive this life as a concept. Uh, and you can change, um, uh, you can choose. Okay, you can choose path, you can choose, uh, but all the, the choices are from things that you planned for yourself. So every one of, of them is okay. okay? Uh, so you can't change who you are. Okay? You can't change uh, your uh, soul. This is inherent. It's who you are, okay? You can change the way you perceive, and this is what you want to do. Because you came to this life, you carry upon yourself beliefs, 
and even even belief systems and even genetic um, plan okay and some of them are things you came here to change and and this is what you want to do so you're not changing who you really are okay you're changing the perception of the the body of the michelle okay the real uh, who you really are is not michelle okay? it's something vast it's something so much more uh, big and with uh, uh, so much uh, to express and so many facets to you like a diamond okay so if you felt that until now maybe only uh, some facets were expressing themselves maybe now you want to take responsibility you want to take the power away from the people that are uh, uh, you know holding this puppet that you think you are so you can take it away from them and Okay. It's not changing your higher self. It's taking res full responsibility of the path that you want to do in this life. Okay, and about the fear. Uh, even if you can't see it like Matthew does, you can do a, a process to find it, okay? Uh, and you start the process with working with your body wherever you have pain or discomfort. Uh, all of these things, or even maybe an, an illness, all of these things are a tool for yourself, your soul to help you to do the work. So I do actually work with my body or talk to my body and things of that nature. My, um, I don't know. I guess I kind of wanted to firm up whether or not I had made a transition of who I'm working with. You I know what? that I wanted to kind of comprehend whether what I think has happened happened. Um, that I'm working not with an Arcturian, but rather Pleiadian energy as a higher self because I chose, because I choose to have a different kind of energy. You have um, not one, you have a few entities around you, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of, of entities. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, and what you choose is where your point of view is directed to. Mm -hmm. okay? So, if you talk to Jack, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that he's the only one that can give you and help you and, and transmit energy. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, but you can choose the thing that is more comfortable to you at this point. It's, it's completely legitimate. Okay? You need to feel in sync with his energy mm -hmm. and it can change you can have different phases okay? mm -hmm. so one of the features when my daughter was talking with um the arcturian higher self was how irritated she was with me. <laughs> 
and how stupid she felt I was and how I didn't listen. Um, <laughs> is that is that common <laughs> for for people's higher uh, selves? <laughs> well, again, it's not the higher self, okay? Okay. Well, Part of you guide. is not willing to listen. Uh huh. Uh, it's again. It's about your perception. Mm -hmm. And as long as you are in a body, then your perception and your vision is limited, and it's natural. And sometimes you uh, don't feel in sync with a different with the with a specific entity in a specific moment and it's perfectly fine okay? but the entities that want to help uh, are always in actually love this is like the, the vibration that they bring to us this is their a tool of, of working on your heart it's like it's like melting something always love yeah okay thank you very much Does anyone else have a question? Yes, I have a question uh, from our chat. Um, Manuel, we have several more questions. Are you doing all right? Are you are you feeling comfortable? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, Manuel has a question. It says, uh, how do you deal with a partner that doesn't want to grow? It's a great question. I thought you would like that one. <laughs> yeah, well... First of all, every human being that you meet, and it doesn't matter if he's a part of your life or you just meet him for a very brief encounter, every person is a mirror to you and has a certain and specific role for you and you for him. And the partner is so much more, um, you know, meaningful in your life because we view it as um, a playground. We view relationship with your spouse or your boyfriend, it doesn't matter, as the most significant playground that you can use in order to learn to grow to expand so first of all if you feel a difficulty then the first thing is to be thankful for it because if it was so easy and you know peaches and roses then it would mean nothing and you don't really need it okay you don't come to this planet and to this body just to have fun you need also to have fun but uh, you come here um, to learn. Okay. So the first thing is really to be thankful, to uh, imagine yourself, uh, and even maybe in real life, go to the to your um, uh, spouse and thank him. Uh, for giving you the opportunity to grow, to experience this difficulty and to grow from it. Okay? So this is 
the only place um, to work from it's only from being thankful and then accepting him for who he is now it doesn't necessarily mean that if it's really really bad if the relationship is bad if there is a violence for example it doesn't mean you need to stay with him okay maybe maybe the lesson is a to be able to live, okay, to live uh, a bad relationship, okay, and many people are in this place. But if this is the lesson, then the only place to do it is from being thankful and accepting, okay, not from fighting not from resisting, not from anger. Uh, the, the right place is first of all to accept at this point, at this moment, this is my partner. Okay? First of all, I accept it. Okay? And I accept myself for putting myself in this relationship even if it's very bad. So the only place to change and to bring something new is from accepting. And of course, it's not, uh, it's not something we can uh, explain in a few minutes, okay? It's a work that you need to do, but you need to understand the place that you have to do the work from. Um, do you have a more specific question about, about your relationship? Well, this was a question from within the chat. So we'll leave it there. If there's another question that comes forward, um, we will offer it. But uh, Lana has a question. We'll move forward to her. And then if Manuel uh, comes back, we will come back to you. Lana? Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, greetings, uh, L guides. This is Yana. Hi. I I was starting to feel the tears as soon as you um, were coming in, so I know my heart is being worked on. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, so my my question is um, this is is about perspective. It, just to segue from what you were saying and i am interested in in a perspective where everything is a perfection where everything is in uh is seen that th there's nothing wrong with what we're seeing uh where everything is flawless and that would be seen everything through god's eyes my understanding um so, you know, when I'm observing animals and I see how they just really not shocked by anything we do and they love us and they, you know, they're just there for us all the time. And then we see them killing each other in the wild and, you know, do things to each other that are, you know, kind of shocking to us and, and upsetting to us. Um, how can that be seen? as as a perfect thing and because the reason i'm asking is because a lot of people justify human behavior as so well we're just practically animals so what can be expected of us justifying human behavior i didn't hear you oh yes uh sometimes people say well we behave badly because we you know we came from animal Animals. kingdom or we we just kind of like one step up from the animals, which is, you know, I, I, I see us as equal with animals, but I, I just want to know how to see the violence in the animal kingdom as a positive thing. And, and also, if it's that not too much, I wanted to tie something else to this question, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, how, how, in the same vein, how do we explain what went on with you know slavery and Holocaust and all the horrible you know things that that to us are horrible? And how do we explain our our belief in law of attraction and in in, in our power in, do, in making choices? How do um, we explain to people that those things actually, in someone's in God perspective, they were perfect, that they were, there was nothing wrong with them, that, uh, you know what I mean, that they're, uh, you know, they're not bad. Because a lot of people, you know, including myself, I'm still struggling with it. And I, you know, I just wish that those things never happen. And I, I just want to see how I can get from here to where you guys are, I guess I would say. Okay. Well, your question or questions uh, are very deep and very wide. Okay. So we're not sure um, we can really get to the bottom of all of this topic. It's like a topic that can take a long time. Uh, we just want to touch something, okay? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, we want to touch the topic of what is good and what is bad or dark and light it's about perception in order to live in this human body you need to come with some um, uh, limiting beliefs. We, we don't want to say um, false, but um, some beliefs that are not, we would say, the truth, okay, or not exactly the truth. Or you would not be able to sustain this this life you would not be able to go through this process okay so you come with some false ideas and we will not talk about all of these uh, wrong or false ideas or beliefs and we will only talk about the notion that there is evil and good and that there is dark and light, okay? That there is things that are more important than other things uh, or people that are more important than other people, okay? Mm -hmm. um, we want to suggest that this notion is not the universal truth. It's just a tool for you to survive living in the human body. And your difficulty with things like a Holocaust, things like violence between people or violence in the animal kingdom. Your difficulty with it comes from this notion. Now, it's not a bad thing, okay? You need this belief in order to go through this life. But as a human being that is opening up, that is changing its, its perspective, okay? You can start 
to play with the idea that maybe a darkness is good. Maybe evil is good. Okay? And maybe these are things that you need, just as we talked about the fear, the pain, the illness, you need these things in order to develop as individuals, as societies, and the whole planet. Okay? You need it. So what we want to suggest is to try and bring empathy when you look and you observe the horrible things that are happening slavery genocide things that happened and are happening all over the world as crazy as this notion can seem to you try to bring empathy even to the worst person, okay? even to the worst killer, because uh, exactly as we talked about bringing a change to a relationship, even if your uh, partner is violent to you and is hitting you and you need to go out of there, you need to run away from him, Okay, even to that person, before you break the relationship, you need to bring empathy and acceptance. It's a very hard lesson. It's a very difficult lesson for human beings. But it's something that you cannot avoid if you want to grow spiritually. So it's really like the tip of the iceberg, which is what we talked about. Thank you for that. Reinhardt has a question now, if we can move forward. I hope that helps you, Lana. Okay. I was actually, <laughs> I was just saying how thankful I was and my microphone was muted, I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, can I just ask, oh, sorry, I, I one quick follow-up sure. to that. Um, so I, I actually already started going in that direction and and, um, and this this is such an unpopular opinion amongst human, you, you are correct. Uh, and actually, I forgot my follow up. So I'm just going to let the person speak. <laughs> Sorry. But I really thank you for, for your answer. Thank you. OK, You're thank welcome. you for that. Reinhard, are you able to unmute your mic? Yes. OK, go ahead. Yeah, OK. Uh, this is Reinhard. Uh, dear Air Guide, I have a question which is um, for me personally. And I know that my higher self is uh, a touring walk-in, but before he came in, there had been a different being. I, This is what I assume. It could be a Syrian, but I don't know. And how would a new uh, being or higher self would change the person? How can I understand what I have been before and what I am now? I hope this is understandable. Well, again, the entities don't change you. Okay? okay. You go you go through phases and um, the vibration is, is different and also your we would say your window is different okay the, the the expansion of how how much you can open 
your uh, your window to perceive so this is the things that are changing you are not changing okay so in different uh, parts of your life different beings can uh, come forward and work with you and also again the other ones are not vanished sometimes they they stay and they give their input maybe in a more uh, in the background or in a more delicate way okay um, does this answer your question or is it something more um, precise that you want to ask um, no this is very nice for me to know because I I will have no problem with this but not knowing is a problem for me yeah Thank you very much so what what I see is that you are really a much more open okay and just uh, again with no fear it's like you want to surrender to the knowledge to the energy that's the whole the only uh, thing you are responsible okay yes. this is what i understood also before but i i didn't know what i asked about and now i know thank you very much you're welcome okay perfect thank you so much um it, it's it's usually when something comes to us isn't it that it's calling to us and it's for us to explore that and to yeah. and it doesn't really come to us until it's really time for that and is, is is that is that sure yeah and and also parts of of you are walking around with entities that are already there but you were not open to perceive it and right so this is right. the change yeah. Okay, Reinhard, is that is that good for you? Or are you? This is beautiful. Thank you very much. That helps Dankeschön. a lot. And thank you. This is the first question I think you ask in a webinar, isn't it? Yeah, but it's the most important for my, for myself. Well, perfect. Well, I'm glad you got to answer, ask your question. So thank you. Okay, Micheline, you have a question. Reinhard, can you mute yourself? Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming. Um, I, this is to continue the thread about the higher self because I've become aware that we have more than one. Am I not right? Well, we would say you have many faucets, many faces, like a faces of a diamond. Okay? Mm and many um, uh, entities that are working with you. So you have this one, um, we would say, um, like the core, okay? The core of your being, like this uh, original spark, okay? This is who you you are and this original spark is eternal mm. and of course it develops okay it wants to express different things in different life time lifetimes okay? so try not to feel uh, that you are a uh, like schizophrenic and uh, on the contrary, try to connect to the core of your being. Okay? And the connection is through the imagination that we did in the beginning, through uh, feeling and allowing yourself to feel in your body this light. This light is your core being. So many people today are trying to define, is this my higher self? Is this my other higher self? Um, we don't share 
the need um, to search for that. It's like, uh, in our view, it's not the direction that is helping you and not the planet. Okay? The, the direction is to connect, to feel, um, to feel one. Okay? This is the feeling you want to search for. And when something is calling you, it can be um, something you want to study or someone you want to be with or anything. When you feel, you feel it calling you, okay? Then you know it's, a, it's something that your, your deeper core is, is bringing to the surface. So try to search for these feelings. Yes. And, and we want to, to, again, say something to all of you about uh, the, the responsibility, like taking ownership on this lifetime, okay? Uh, you came to this lifetime with with a few things you want, you want to do, a few things you want to experience and a few stages you want to go through. And if you want to take responsibility for this lifetime, it means for us really dealing with this notion of who am I, who uh, uh, or what the, the, the entity that is really me, what it wants. This is where you want to dig. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I, I'm not sure. Did Matthew? Did you have another question or not? Uh, yeah, I did have another question. Okay, if, if this will be the last question, uh, just so everyone knows. But uh, please go ahead and ask your question. And are you are you doing all right over there, our Pleiadian friends? Do you need water or no. anything like that? No. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Go ahead, Matthew. Okay. Um, my whole life there's been this guy beside me, following me around uh, in a white robe. I can never hear him, but I can, I've always been able to see him. Once um, I watched him, I, I read his lips as he told me his name was John. Um, and I wanted to know uh, who he is, where he comes from, and uh, how I can learn to hear him and those others that follow me around. I see him on your right side. Yes, like, he's there now. Walking, walking beside you on your right side. And um, but this, he's one of your guides, your personal guides. And he has a very, um, a very specific role in your life. Like, um, well, it's... It's not exactly guarding you, not like a guardian. It's more a very subtle, um, you know, like a compass, okay? It's like if you are uh, taking a road or a, a path that is not the exact thing that you planned, for yourself, and maybe you want to see see it differently. Then he is like very gently, like really, you know, 
touching your your uh, eyebrow, um, how do you call it, um, touching you here, and just very gently so you can see and be aware of things that you're not uh, aware of. Um, and of course, he's doing his job, okay? You don't need to worry, but you can open a channel, a direct channel, to, um, to talk to him. Um, and the way for you to do it is through meditation that will be um, concentrated in this, like, in this area of your body, okay? But, as we mentioned before, it's nothing to do with, with effort, okay? Just the opposite. What you want to do is re completely relax, uh, completely uh, let go of the outcome, and just feel, just allow yourself to feel what's going on here. You can, you can imagine him uh, maybe touching you and allow him to do the work for you. Okay? And this is really something that can happen really easily if you completely surrender. Just surrender to it. Is this, does this answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to ask if you can bring uh, Yalika uh, back now, please. Um, and we want to tell you thank you so very much for coming, and we, we truly appreciate it. If you had any closing words, we would be de definitely honored if you would give us a blessing before you go. So... Uh, for all of you, you are working on, on the heart today. Um, and not, not only with the words or the concepts, maybe even more so energetically. So we would really suggest if you can take it easy and not rush immediately to the everyday life and the pressure because the longer you allow yourself to be just relaxed and with your heart open, then it, the work can continue and you can uh, um, allow us to take it even deeper. So if, if any of you can just take it easy and even rest for a while, the work will continue. Um, and we want to uh, express our deep uh, feelings of gratitude because this work is for us um, just as it is for you. Um, so it's really an opportunity. We bless you all. Blessings to you and, and much love to you from all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. you back? She's back that I'm fast. Back. <laughs> it's still very, uh, it takes me uh, quite a while to completely go we'll back because the, the body is very numb. Like okay. My palms are really. Yeah. Really numb.
Okay, we'll just take a moment. Um, while you are taking your moment, I just want to uh, say to everyone, this has been the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. Uh, we, I'm going to do a few announcements quickly. Um, we have coming up the um, the Ascension Workshop in Dansville, New York. It's August 16th through the 21st. It's five nights, uh, five days, and four nights of. Uh, interaction with Jim and Max, learning channeling, galactic Reiki, uh, telepathy, and all kinds of wonderful healing and channeling will be going on. If you want more information, you can go to Human Colony or hukalo.org and you can find all the information to sign up. If you are interested in being in the webinars, being able to be guaranteed a space in our paid webinars, then you can become a member of uh, Human Colony for $10 a month. And that money also supports our activities and our small expenses that we do have. But you can also find that on the website, hukalo.org. So Yelika, your website is, why don't you tell us your website? It's channeling online in one word mm -hmm. point dot net. Channeling online dot net. Channeling online dot net. And you can go and read about you and, and you have a new online channeling business. This if, is the new yeah, the new one. So uh, you, you can uh, ask a question and pay per question and you receive it within twenty four hours. Okay. That's a unique, uh, new, la newly launched uh, service that yeah. you're offering. It That's launched perfect. yesterday. <laughs> Just in time. Just in yeah. time. So, channelingonline.net. So uh, thank you so very much for your time and for thank your you. your wisdom and your sharing. And, and everyone really appreciated it. And I... Again, um, it's nice that we are able to, to meet channelers from not just the U.S., not just, you know, but to, to spread out. And, and you're our first channel that we've had on from uh, Israel. So uh, we hope to uh, slowly move our way throughout the Middle East and, and Africa and everywhere else. So um, and we'd like to, you know, extend the offer to bring you back uh, at some point. Uh, I would to love to again. Thank you so very much. And I hope you enjoyed talking to the different people from all over the world. We had uh, people from all over, so. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did. So thank it's you amazing. so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Thank you, everyone. Love. Thank you. Thank and you. much love to you. And uh, next week we will have Jana Hopman. She's a channeler from the Netherlands. Uh, she also channels uh, Pleiadians, but also Arcturians and the Hathors. She specifically works with Stargates as part of her uh, training. So we will have her next week. Jana Hopman, that's on the 21st of July. Same bat time, same bat channel. So until then, we'll see everyone next week. And much love to you once again. I'm going to cut it off. So bye, bye. to everyone in, the, bye to everyone in the YouTube chat. Thank you. And, bye uh, from Israel. Yeah, bye from Israel. And bye from the Netherlands. Everyone, if you want to unmute your mic, you can say where you are. Bye from Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> Germany. Germany. Wow. North Vancouver, BC. BC, Canada. St. Louis. St. Louis. Louisiana. Awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. And then in the chat, I know they're all over the place as well, too. So thank you so much, everybody. See you next week. Much love. Bye. Namaste. Bye. Bye.